All right, the next victim is here, and it is a John Deere STX 38. They made these from 89 to 97. And if I'm not mistaken, from 89 to 93, the decks were yellow, and they're called yellow deck, obviously. And from 94 to 97, they were black decks. I have not been able to get into the engine compartment because it is bolted shut. And so I don't know the exact year, but it's got to be somewhere between 94 and 97. Um, the gentleman that gave this tractor to me said that it is possessed. And he has had nothing but trouble, and it is in a non-operating condition at this time. So let me get you in a stand, and we'll start doing some diagnosis and see if we can't get this thing to run. All right, what do you say we unbolt the hood and take a peek inside? And a little support board there. I'd say that's a little bit All right, so what we have, we have a Kohler Command 13 on this. It'll be a 13 horsepower. And let's see, it's not froze. That's a good sign. Turns over. There's compression. So that's a good sign. That's something with this board in it. What, what in the world? <laughs> What, they got a screw in there? Yeah, they do. They have a screw on the other side of it. Yeah, okay. All right, so what do you want to do first? All right, so I did have a battery. I just installed that in there. It uh, actually came with a mower, and it's uh, May of this year, 23. So that's actually pretty good there. But what do you say before we try starting it up, we check our oil and our gas and gas... There's a little bit in there. It don't smell bad either. Don't look bad. And our oil. What do we got for oil? And it is. Don't look bad. And it is on the full mark. So that's good. So. What do you say we hop on. And see what we get out of this thing. It's either going to be a. Very quick. Oh you know what. Let me turn the fuel on. There we go. So this will either be a very quick video or where am I going here? Rolling away, rolling away. Or a long one. So let me see. That's the choke. Where's the choke? I think the choke's all the way up. Yeah, alright. Key is off to my side. And what do you say we crank her? See if it does crank. Well, either that battery is no good, or we got another problem. All right, so I got this little Foxwell battery tester, and it's usually been pretty reliable. Bought it off Amazon. Oops, get her to stay on there. And this is 300 cold cranking apps. So, yeah, it's at 12.19 now, so that battery's good. And let's do a battery test, enter. Um, let's do it in vehicle. I'm not sure what it is, probably a regular. Cold cranking amps, it's already at 300, battery says it's 300. And, no, nah, it says to replace the battery. Well, I thought it was good. Let me do it out of vehicle. See what that says. Gel regular, let me go with regular. Maybe that'll do something. 300. And it's still telling me to replace the battery. 
State of health is a 41%. State of charge is a 50%. So, uh, looks like I thought I had a good battery, but apparently not. That battery's only a year old. I wonder if that came from Walmart. I don't know where, yeah, distributed by Walmart. I'm gonna take that one back and get a new one. That's perfect. That'll work. So, let me get the jumper pack hooked up to it and uh, we'll try it again. All right, I have the battery charger hooked up. Um, pedal is in. And let's see what we get now. I don't see nothing wrong with it. Not much gas in it. Take the lock off. Brakes off. We'll come out here into the field. We'll try out the mower deck. how that runs. I really expected there to be a lot of problems with this the way the guy was talking. Alright, let's turn on the mower deck. Let's see what we have. We have nothing. Alright. And I'm running out of gas. <laughs> running out of gas. All right, so the mower deck does not run. Let's see if we can make it back. Nope. <laughs> well, guess I should have put gas in it. And we'll just use the right on up here. That looks good. Shut her down. All right, so the engine actually seems to run fine. I think they did say something about the carburetor flooding, that if you didn't turn the shut off valve, it would drain the fuel tank. So we probably will have to at least look at that carburetor, make sure it's, uh, it, isn't, it isn't doing that. But I think for now, we're just gonna focus on this, uh, this uh, mower deck and trying to get it to run. It is an electric PTO, it's not a manual. So I don't know if we got a pulled wire or a bad uh, clutch in it. So let's get her up in the air and take a look. Right here is your electric clutch. So when you flip the switch on there, electricity is applied to a magnet and that draws it in and that engages your, whoops, sorry. That engages your belt. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn the key on. And uh, I put some pressure on the seat and pull the switch. And we should be hearing a clicking sound, and we're not. So I don't know if there's power getting to it or not. So let's check. Let's see. Okay, I checked the seat safety switch, and that seems to be operating as designed. So what I want to do is right here, I'm going to try to. Well. I wanted to try to disconnect this right here. And now we can see if we're getting power to this. And if you can see that light right there, when I turn the key on and I'm going to be sitting in the seat, we should have a light. It does not look like we have any power to it at all. All right, not, and I wasn't hearing a clicking earlier. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this up and I'm gonna hook power up to the uh, clutch itself and see if it clicks. All right, I got these leads hooked up to my uh, jumper pack. 
And when I reach in and touch this, we should hear a click. All right, so the clutch itself is good. That's not good. The clutch itself is good. The issue is going to be in the wiring or either in the wiring or in the switch. So next thing, is that loose? That ground wire is loose. Look at that. I don't know if you can see. If you look right here, that's a ground wire and it is loose, just spinning right around on there. That could just be our problem. Let me tighten it up and we'll check it out. All right, she's all tight. And with that all in place, what do you say we turn the key, a little pressure on the seat, and see if it works. Now. Is it clicking or not? I can't tell. really can't tell with my hearing. All right, my better judgment tells me I shouldn't be doing this, but we're gonna do it anyway. We'll try firing her up. And engage the clutch. Okay, she kicked out. Try it again. Ah, the battery. Alright, let's engage it again. All right, well, she didn't kick out that time, so let's get you out of the way, out of harm's way. And I say we pull it outside and go try it. All right, we lined up here. Put her on a load here. And let's engage and see if she comes on. Didn't have enough RPMs, now watch it not start. Next thing we are going to have to address on this is the carburetor. 
So let's get it back into the garage and uh, tackle that. All right, she does run. Um, so the next thing we're going to have to tackle is the carburetor. It is flooding through, and one of the ways you could tell that it smells like gasoline in there. So I don't want to, didn't really want to run it too much, but it's warmed up with some gas in it, so that oil sump is cleaned out. So that's going to be the next thing. So let's go ahead and get the uh, carburetor off of this thing, get her cleaned up. It, it doesn't run like it's really dirty, it's just the seat in it is leaking. So I'm not going to worry about doing a full carburetor rebuild. I just want to clean that seat up and see if we can get it to stop overflowing. Uh, let me see, 10 millimeter. Yeah, of course, there it goes. All right, that should stay there. And we'll take her over to the bench and uh, take a look at that seat in it. All right, let's pop the bowl off and see what we have. She's really very clean. All right, the one thing I do want to show you on this, if you look at the way that float is setting, I think it might actually be a little bit too far down, and that could be part of our issue. When you turn it upright and blow through, you should be able to blow air through the fuel intake inlet. When you turn it upside down, it should shut off, and it does. But when you just barely move that up, then it allows fuel to seep through. So what I'm going to do is take a heat gun and heat this up, this little piece right there, right here, and bend that down a little bit. That way it will shut off more in this position here, not all the way down. All right, I'm gonna to try to do this without melting everything. Looks like it's down a tad bit. Let me get a little bit more. All right, I'm gonna try that and see how that looks. Yeah, I think it's a little better. Can't blow through it that way. That's good. It does look like it's it's a little bit better because the angle isn't if you look it's going this way it was more that way so hopefully that'll fix that problem and I do realize that this might have been leaking a little bit there but let me get her put back together again and get her on the mower and uh, see what happens yeah I bet you carburetor's probably been leaking it's the day they put that aftermarket on there that would be my guess. They're re they really are hit and miss. They're cheap. You know, you can get them $20, $20 or something, but they are hit and miss. Sometimes they work, sometimes they won't. Father-in-law just bought one, put it on a gas golf cart. Same thing, leaks. But, yeah, you take a chance. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. I was mentioning earlier about the age of this. If you look right here on the serial number, the two six, the six is the year, it'll be 90. I'm not, I'm not quite sure why it's a two, but if it's a two six, it's a, it's a 96, two seven, it's a 97, two eight, it's a 98. Um, so this is a 96 engine, the mower deck, and again, it is the black deck, not the yellow deck, but 
what do you say? We try to fire it up. Yeah, it seems like it's got a little miss. This thing keeps rolling around on me. Let me take out the spark plug. See what that looks like. Yeah, she's got some carbon in her too. Yeah. Got a little bit of carbon build up. I'm gonna go clean that up. Actually, I got a different spark plug. Hopefully it'll work better. As soon as I can see where to put it. And it's always good to start them by hand. Yeah, she's all the way in. And I'll just give her a little snug with the wrench. Ratchet. I told she was all the way in. Mostly. Alright. Now, we'll start it again and see if it makes any difference. It's a little better. There is still a little bit of a miss in it. Um, to be honest with you, I think it's just the fact it's that cheap aftermarket carburetor that's on there. As long as it runs all right and it isn't leaking, I'm just going to let it go like it is. It, it, it moves fine. I don't think it's really going to be an issue. Uh, just got to wait and see if it, if the fuel tank drains out. As long as it don't drain out into the oil, then I'll have to give her an oil change. Give her an oil change and uh, a new filter. And then, I don't know what to do with the deck on this thing. As you already seen, there's a big piece missing out of the top. And then the whole sign is missing out of here. So, that's just a cheap plastic. I don't, I don't even know why they made them things. That was just terrible. But what I do have, and don't hate me, it's a Craftsman, an LT2000 hood. And it mounts a little different. You kind of have hooks that go here. So I'm thinking maybe if we can maybe slice here to fit that in, I think it'll clear the exhaust down. And we'll just have to unbolt these original hood pins. Okay, it is several days later. I did go ahead and cut a couple slots in here to mount the Craftsman hood to it. So let's get that set in place and check it out, see how it looks. You didn't really think I was going to leave it gray, did you? Nothing, a couple cans of John Deere green spray paint can't take care of. So it doesn't look too bad. Um, obviously, it does still say Craftsman down here, but. Ah, we won't tell anybody. I won't tell if you don't tell. But it looks pretty decent. The only biggest flaw I would say is the back here. You can see there is a little bit of a gap on it. And I do still have to put a little bit of a, a rubber stop up here. But other than that, it's 100% it's better than what the original hood was all broke up. So really the only thing I have left to do with this now is just get my pressure washer over here and get her cleaned up and she's ready to go. Now the previous owner, he said that this mower was possessed. I really don't think that it is at all. It was just looking for a little bit of love and a little bit of attention. It's, it's actually a nice little mower. 
the only thing left to do on it is to uh, get her cleaned up and uh, get her up for sale. So with that, I want to just say thank you for hanging out in the garage with me today as we turn wrenches on old junk, breathing life back into them. And I would appreciate it if you would hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. And I'll catch you on the next video.